بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أعاذنا الله منها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله وبياكم My dear brothers and sisters in Islam it is a great honor for me to be here this afternoon, alhamdulillah. After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to thank our Imam, our Shaykh, Shaykh Abu Salman, hafizahullah ta'ala, for inviting me, mashallah, to this wonderful masjid and to this, mashallah, wonderful community, uh, our masjid, Masjid Dar al Salam. I used to hear the masjid and uh, have known about this masjid and I've known, mashallah, Sheikh Abu Salman since I came to Manchester. Alhamdulillah, I met with the Sheikh uh, a number of times where he visited our masjid and also we've met in other masajids as well. So, alhamdulillah, and uh, finally I am here, mashallah, in Masjid Dar al Salam. Inshallah ta'ala, today is my first visit and it will not be my last visit, inshallah ta'ala. I'll be coming back. And Alhamdulillah, I want to also thank Brother Rubel. Is that right? The way I uh, pronounce the name, Rubel, yeah? MashaAllah, Jazakallah Khair. He was, uh, MashaAllah, the Sheikh was in touch with me and organizing this, Alhamdulillah. And Ustad Tawfiq as well, okay, MashaAllah. So they've been organizing this, Alhamdulillah, and get together this majlis today. So Jazakallah Khairan. And it's also nice to see, mashallah, some of our brothers, some of our, some of our elders that I know them from Masjid Al-Furqan as well. They're, they're here, alhamdulillah. It's always good to see the community together, mashallah. Wherever, whichever masjid you go and visit, you see, mashallah, your Muslim brothers, alhamdulillah, that you have met before. And I want to also, mashallah, and congratulate the reciter, and mashallah, and for reciting the Quran, mashallah, so beautifully. I was enjoying it. I didn't want him to stop. And I'm sure the whole lecture should have been just the Quran recitation. And I think we should go home after this. Alhamdulillah, that was so beautiful. Mashallah, Jazallah khair. Is, mashallah, it was uh, soothing to the heart. And mashallah, and alhamdulillah, enjoyment for the ears. Alhamdulillah. So Jazakumullah khairan. And, and I want to thank all of our youngsters who are here, mashallah, our youth, and for coming out and alhamdulillah, benefiting, uh, inshallah ta'ala, hopefully from this gathering. And uh, I was looking at the title of our, of our talk, uh, and you know how to deal with calamities. And you know when this when this actually poster was made, and when this uh, topic was chosen, what happened in Turkey and 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 and, 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 and Syria didn't happen. Subhan, this was before that. It seems as if as if the brothers were predicting a big calamity was about to come. <laughs> Subhanallah. So the calamity, Subhanallah, has happened. Since that time, and each and every one of us right now, we are going through some struggles. There's no one who's free from, from a struggle. So beginning with myself, I have a lot of issues, okay, that I have to deal with. And I'm sure Sheikh Abu Salman, he has got, and his plate is full of issues. He has to deal with, subhanAllah, everybody is going through things. You know, whether it is a personal uh, matter, whether it is a familial matter, whether it is a communal matter, everybody is going through certain difficulties. No one can raise his hand and say, like, Alhamdulillah, I'm free from any problems. I'm, 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 everything is fine with me. Nothing is wrong with my life. I am enjoying it every moment of it. Right now, I don't have any difficulties. I'm not being tested. You're lying if you tell me that. 
Okay, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us something different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I have created death and, and, and life for one purpose, to test you. Everybody's sitting on a test right now. You know when you have a chemistry test or maths test or you have a physics test and, and you're going to school, that night before the, before the test, you, you, you don't sleep well. You're kind of like worried about that test. But just imagine this life, this life from A to Z is just a test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. Yes, we're going through some individual uh, issues and difficulties and, and, and calamities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also uh, reminded us. And as a human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, indeed we have created mankind in toil. Okay. In hardship. It's not going to be easy. Life is not going to be easy. Youngsters, okay, you're young today. The exam paper you're sitting on right now, you know, I, this is the example I give. I, I say to the people, imagine your life is just like an exam paper. Okay, just like an exam paper. Normally, the exam paper, the questions at the beginning, are they easy or hard? The first question, like the first question, second question, third question. Normally, those questions, are they hard or easy questions? Normally they are easy questions, like one marker. Okay, one mark, two marks, things like that. As the exam progresses, as the paper progresses, the harder questions come at the end. Am I right? That's how the exams are normally designed. This is exactly how our lives have normally been designed, subhanAllah. When you are young, you go through certain issues, but they're not as hard as the questions that are waiting for you later on. As you get older, the questions get longer and harder. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give you more ajr. Because the marks on those questions are a lot more than the marks you, you would get when you are still young and the questions are not very difficult. Okay, as you get older, so that's why we have gray hair right now. As you get older, your hair becomes grayer and grayer. Why? Because you will be dealing with more issues. Okay, more issues. The questions get harder and harder and harder. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدٍ also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us at the beginning of Surah, uh, surah Al-Ankabut. Alif Lam Mim Ahasib An-Nasu An Yutaraku An Yaqulu Amanna Wa Hum La Yuftanun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ahasib An-Nas, do people really think? An Yutaraku An Yaqulu Amanna, especially if you're a believer, that if you say that I'm a believer, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I believe in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I follow the religion of Islam. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to just say, okay, good, you're doing well and khalas, you're not going to be tested. No, you will be absolutely put to the test. While they have not been tested, they're going to be tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah said, we have tested those who came before you. The nations who came before us, they were tested. We will be tested as well. Allah said, the reason I'm doing this is what? So I can actually separate and differentiate those who are telling the truth, those who are true believers, and those who are just lying. Those who just say, yeah, I'm a believer, I'm a believer. But inside, they're not a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that type of people. He said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ some people, they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on edge. Yeah, there are many of them. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ Some people, they worship Allah on the edge. فَإِنْ أَصَابَتُ خَيْرِ إِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ If something good happens to him, he's okay. I'm a good Muslim, mashallah. Things are well. Everything's going well for me. I'm going to come to the masjid. Alhamdulillah, I'm going to pray my salah. I'm going to give sadaqah because things are easy. But if difficult and calamity comes to him, what happens? But the day a calamity comes, the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that person to the test, in qalab, he turns around. Because like, what? I've got nothing to do with Islam. I'm going to leave. In qalab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
خسر الدنيا والآخرة. What will happen to that person if you turn away from the religion of Islam when a calamity comes towards you? What's going to happen? خسر الدنيا والآخرة. That person has totally lost the dunya and the next life. Subhanallah. You will be a loser. It's like someone. Imagine you're sitting in the exam hall, for example, and you you got your exam paper in front of you. And you kind of like answer some of the questions, the easy ones, mashallah, everything's going well. You're answering all these questions. And then a hard question comes and you become frustrated and you leave the test. What will happen? Will you, will you pass that test? You're not going to pass that test. You have lost. People say to you, why, where, where are you going? I gave up. It's too much. Okay, so you will just be like that person. So if you give up as a Muslim right now, as a believer, when you are tested, if you give up your religion, what will happen? You are just like that person who left in the middle of the test. I say, I don't want to do the rest of this paper. It's too much for me. Okay? Also, I'm going to tell you something else. Another ayah. Another ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannah وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannah Do you really think guys That you're just going to enter paradise Without you being tested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I'm going to give you jannah But you have to go through the test Am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannah Walamma ya'tikum mathalu al-lazina khalu min qablikum Okay without you guys suffering The same way that Those who came before you also suffered The way that they were tested and there is a there is a, a story in the Sira books. There is a story in the Sira books. A companion called, I want you to, I will ask you this question later on, maybe. A companion called Khabab ibn al Arat. Khabab ibn al Arat. He came to the Prophet. He was he was a he was a Muslim. He has accepted Islam. He lived in Mecca and he was a slave. He was owned by a woman. And when he became a Muslim, the woman who used to own him, she became upset with him, very upset. And now what is she going to do? She's going to punish him for being a Muslim. She punished him so severely. She used to burn, you know, like his back. She wouldn't just like hit him with a stick. She would actually burn him with fire on his back. Just imagine that, the persecution that the companions have gone through. And that companion, he, he was patient and patient and patient and patient and patient. And then finally, it became too much for him. And one day he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this, is, this was the time when the Prophet was still in Mecca. They still haven't left Mecca. They were still living in Mecca. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was resting somewhere near the Kaaba. And when he, this companion came to him and he said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, Allah tastansir lana. Are you not going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us? Are you not going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us victory against our enemies? Okay, we are being persecuted every single day. We are being punished every single day. Okay, we can't bear it anymore. It's too much. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do you think his reaction was? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became upset. He became upset with the companion. And the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, he said to him, let me tell you, let me tell you the following. Those people who used to be believers before my ummah, the ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of them sometimes used to be tortured so much and that did not used to cause them to leave and abandon Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu gave us a description of how those people used to be tortured, the believers who came before our, our ummah, before our nation. The Prophet ﷺ said one of them would be brought 
and he will be placed inside a ditch, okay? And then a saw would be placed on his head and then he would be cut in half from here all the way until he becomes two, until he splits into what? Into two, just like that. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that type of torture would not prevent him or stop him from being a believer. He would continue being a believer. So they're actually sewing his head, like doing like this, cutting him in, into, in, in, into two pieces like this. And then he goes on like, he says that, I'm not going to leave my religion. I'm a believer. I'm Islam. I'm a Muslim. I'm upon Islam. I'm a Muslim. I'm not going to leave. And the Prophet ﷺ gave another example. He said, one of those people, what used to happen was like, they used to be combed with what? A metal comb. And their flesh, the meat and the bones used to be separated with what? With combs that are made of what? Iron and, and, and metal. Imagine if someone is scratching your body with that kind of stuff and your, your flesh comes off from the bones. And then he would be told, leave your religion. And he would say, I'm not leaving. Those were calamities. Remember Bilal and what used to happen to him. He would be taken in the middle of the day, like the hottest time. I'm sure, mashallah, some of the elders were here. They went to Mecca. They've done Umrah and Hajj maybe a number of times. And if you go to Mecca during the summer holidays, for example, the, the, when it's really hot, like July, August time, subhanallah, the heat there is so hot unbearable and imagine Bilal anhu, and other companions who were kind of like slaves and and masakeen and and they didn't have anybody to protect them they used to be taken at that time and then they would be placed on the floor and then what they would do they would place a big rock on top of his chest and they would beat him up and they would say to him leave your religion and he would say ahadun ahad, ahadun ahad. okay and he would be kept there and his master would beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him until he becomes tired. And then he takes a rest. And then he beats him up, beats him up, beats him up. And then he becomes tired. And then he goes back again. And then Bilal says, ahadun, ahadun, ahad. There's no way I'm going to say what you want me to say. Which is what? To say like Allah, wal Uzza, the gods of these people that they used to worship, they are better than Allah. He say, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say, ahadun, ahadun, ahad. Those were calamities. Those were like trials and tests subhanallah those companions have gone through so right now as muslims we are being tested each and every one of us we will be tested when you are tested how are you going to survive inshallah ta'ala we'll come to that so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to the companion at the end of that hadith he said to him a time is going to come yes now i know what you're going through is difficult yeah you're being tortured right now. I know that the Prophet is saying to them, I know that. But let me tell you, a time is going to come, a time is going to come when someone is going to travel, okay, from, from Hadramaut all the way to Sana'a, and that person who's traveling will not fear anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only thing that he's going to fear for also, and he's going to have fear from is his flock that he has got. Maybe uh, a predator might come and attack his flock but no one else is going to touch him. SubhanAllah. That means like people will become Muslims in that region and Alhamdulillah, peace is going to spread. The Muslims will, Alhamdulillah, have the upper hand and everything. So the Prophet told, told that companion, this is what is going to happen. But rather you guys, you are actually in haste. You are rushing too much. Okay, you want victory very quickly and victory won't come just like that. Okay, take it easy. Slow down, be patient. The ayat that our, mashallah, beautiful Qari has recited, they were very powerful ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among the ayat that the brother has read, included, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, indeed, we will definitely test you. We will test you, yeah? Okay, we will test you with some some type of fear, not all types of fear, some type of fear. Min al khawf. Well, you also, we will test you with hunger. How many people today in this world 
do not have enough to eat. Many people, millions of people don't have three meals a day. Youngsters, now your mom, your father, alhamdulillah, they buy so much food, they bring it home, and then you waste so much food. But in this world, we have so many people who don't even get maybe one meal a day. But look, look what Allah has given you. Allah has given you plenty. He gave you like he, plenty of food, a shelter, and everything. Subhanallah. You have to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Yes, sometimes we will decrease your income, your wealth. Right now, everybody's panicking because of the what? The financial crisis. Okay? The standard of living is going down right now. Okay? Everybody's worried financially. Everyone's saying, Where is my next, for example, income? Where is it going to come from? Am I going to be kicked out of my work? Am I, am I gonna, for example, have good income? Even the income I have right now, will it be sufficient for me and for my family? Everybody's worried. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has said, I am going to cause some of you to die. Because some people will lose their lives. And also your crops. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Give glad tidings to those people who have sabr. And when, if you have sabr, what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, who are the people who have got sabr? They are the ones, when they, when, they, when they are afflicted with a calamity, what do they do? Do they panic? Do they shout? Do they kind of like complain to Allah and say, Ya Allah, why are you doing this to me? It's not fair. Can I say that it's not fair to Allah? Can I, can I say, imagine now you receive a phone call. That phone call says like, your mother calls you or somebody calls you from your family and tells you like, your mom has just been diagnosed with cancer. Stage four. She only has maybe a week or two weeks to live and she's going to die. If you, need, if you hear that news right now, you're going to be shocked. Imagine if somebody goes like, this is not fair. Why is Allah doing this to my mom? My mom, she's a nice woman. She's a nice person she's never harmed anyone why why is allah doing this to her imagine if you complain like that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you don't complain the people who have patience who are they the ones who, who say what when a calamity touches them what do they do they say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. indeed we belong to allah and we go back to allah do you know that you do not own yourself i don't own myself the soul that I have inside me belongs to Allah. The body that I have right now, you know these limbs that I have, my legs, they don't belong to me, they belong to Allah. Yeah. This is what, what it means when you say I'm a Muslim. Do you know what, youngsters, what does it mean when you say that I am a Muslim? What do you think it means? I want one of the youngsters to answer. I don't like, I, I spoke too much today. Normally I don't do talks like this. I always ask questions, it's interactive. So, but today I spoke too much. So let me ask, what do you think when you say I'm a Muslim? What are you trying to say? Do you know what it means when you say I'm a Muslim? Yeah, if you make a mistake, it's not a problem. We learn from mistakes. Some, I want one of the youngsters to, to attempt to answer this question. What do, you, what do you mean when you say I'm a Muslim? Yes, mashallah, well, what are you saying? You are a believer of Allah. That's a good answer. That's a very good answer. Mashallah. What else are you saying? When you say that I am a Muslim. I yes. Ah, mashallah. Yes. You are saying I have surrendered myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I submitted to Allah. That's what you're saying. Okay? That's what Muslim means. Like someone, if I say I am a Muslim, what I'm saying is, I have submitted to Allah. I have surrendered myself to Allah. So that means, my soul belongs to Allah. My body belongs to Allah. My time belongs to Allah. My wealth belongs to Allah. Everything. I am just someone who's owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have submitted to Allah. Remember the story of Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, which was mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ Remember, Ya Muhammad, when Allah said to him, 
When Allah said to Prophet Ibrahim, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ Submit! Submit to Ibrahim! What did Ibrahim say? قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ He said, I have surrendered to the Lord of the Alameen. What does that mean? If you say, I surrendered to the Lord of the Alameen, it means whatever Allah tells me to do, I will do it. If Allah tells me don't do something, I will not do it. That's what it means. And then there is ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ Okay? It is not for a believing man and a believing woman. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something, إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ If Allah decrees something, إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And also his messenger. If they say something, إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ That you have a choice. We have no choice. For example, if Allah tells us, I want you to pray five times a day, you have no choice to say, okay, Allah, I want to pray only three. Five is too much for me. Can you say that? We can't say. If Allah tells you, I want you to fast in the month of Ramadan, can I say, yeah, Allah, this year Ramadan is like too long. It's like uh, uh, 18 hours, 20 hours. I don't feel like fasting this month. I'll delay it for December. I'll fast in the month of December, Ya Allah. Can you do that? Why not? Because you have surrendered to Allah. So you can't say, I'm going to choose, I'm going to pick and choose whenever I feel like it. You will become like what? That person that Allah talked about. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ people who are worshipping Allah on edge. They are on the edge. Okay? If anything good happens to them, they're happy. And they, you see the mashallah, strong Muslims, when things are good, when things become tough, they say, oh, it's too much. They're going to leave. Subhanallah. That's not how a Muslim should live. Okay? So you have to say, I have submitted to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala aslamtu li rabbil alameen. Dear brothers, inshallah ta'ala, I don't like to make this reminder too long. I'm going to, inshallah ta'ala, bring it to a conclusion soon, inshallah. All of us right now, we are aware of what happened in Turkey and in Syria as well. How many thousands of people have passed away? Anybody who can give us a rough estimate? About 26, and now it's just it's going up, yeah. 26,000 people have lost their lives. 26,000 people. So far, so far. Much more than that number are injured. Thousands, if, or if not tens of thousands of houses have been demolished. All of that happened within just one minute. Just like that. Our youngsters, they may ask this question, this difficult question. Ma'alim Muhammad Ali, we know that Allah is merciful. Allah tells us in the Quran, He's merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah is beneficent, He's merciful, He's kind, compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why would Allah do something like this? Why would Allah kill this many people just like that? Was it fair for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do this? Wasn't Allah merciful when He was doing this? Why would Allah do something like this? Okay. Why do we have natural disasters? Why do we have like floods sometimes? Sometimes we have earthquakes. Sometimes we have, uh, for example, um, t t uh, and let's say uh, other nat uh, natural disasters. Why do we have all these issues? Someone may question that. Might come up with that kind of question. We have to remember the following. I will give you a very precise answer to that question. Very precise answer. What I mean precise here is, I'm going to give you a very short, 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 short answer to that question. You don't have to give yourself a headache. You don't have to give yourself a headache. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Anbiya, لَا يُسْأَلُ عَمَّا يَفْعَلْ وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ very short ayah, but it's very profound and very powerful ayah. 
لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Allah is someone that no one can question even the question itself is wrong for you to say why did Allah do something like this who are you to question Allah that's the that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said لا يسألوا عما يفعل no one can question Allah rather it is us who will be questioned وهم يسألون that is a short answer to that question. So what can we say? What, 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 what are we going to say? You don't even have the right. Who are you? You need to question yourself and say, Who am I to question Allah and say to Allah, Ya Allah, what you have done was not fair. What you have, not, what you have done was not good. Who am I to say that? Nobody. I'm nobody. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me who I am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in my place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am the one who created you to begin with. What have I created from you? Alam nakhlukum min ma'in maheen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have created you from, from a despised water. Min ma'in maheen. Faja'allahu fi qararin makeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am the one who has placed you in the womb of your mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who has placed you and created you in the womb of your mother. And you only came out from the womb of your mother when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it. He was the one who used to provide for you that time. He was the one who used to take care of you. He's the one who's taking care of us right now. Right now we, we are sitting in the masjid, Dar es Salaam. We are alhamdulillah enjoying ourselves. We are in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mashallah, we're sitting with our brothers here. The sisters are sitting in their place, alhamdulillah. Everybody is happy, is having a good time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is taking care of us right now. Allah, alam nakhlukum mimma in mahin faja'alna fi. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us in the Quran, wa khuliqa al-insanu ta'ifa. The human being, you have been created weak. You are very weak. We are weak physically. We are weak emotionally. We are weak intellectually. Our brains, our brains, they can never process. They can never process the hikmah of Allah, the wisdom of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his wisdom is so vast. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he describes himself, what did he say? Wallahu alimun hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is very knowledgeable. His knowledge is the ultimate knowledge. And when it comes to wisdom, his wisdom is the ultimate wisdom. Wallahu alimun hakim. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no one can question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is more merciful to those people who died in the earthquake. Those people who died in the earthquake right now and they've lost their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is more merciful to them than their own parents. Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu one day, he saw like a mother who lost her child. And that mother was going crazy. She was looking for her baby. And finally she found her baby. And then when she found her baby, she took the baby and brought the baby close to her chest and she started breastfeeding the baby. And then the Prophet ﷺ looked at her and looked at the companions. The Prophet ﷺ always was mashallah. He always took opportunities. If he saw an opportunity to educate the companions, he used to educate them. He said to the companions, what do you think? Do you know that mother and what she just done? Do you think that that mother would ever throw her child into the fire? They said, La ya Rasulullah, look at how much mercy she's showing her child. She loves her child. There's no way that she would ever throw her child into the hellfire, into the fire. And then the Prophet has said, Let me tell you one thing. Allah is more merciful to his slaves than that mother is to her child. Oh. Yes. Who are we to question? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is as if you are saying, Ya Allah, I know more than you do. I have more wisdom than you have. Okay, I am more merciful than you are. That's what you are saying to Allah technically. When you say, why did Allah cause these things? Why is Allah doing this to, this to the people? What was the, what crime have they committed, those people who've just passed away? They were sleeping in their homes, they were relaxing, and this was before Salat al-Fajr and everybody has gone. Khalas. Why? Who are we to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that question? Nobody. 
لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. That is the short answer. The longer answer for another day. <laughs> okay. So inshallah, that is a short answer. That is inshallah ta'ala the short answer. And being the light ta'ala and this is inshallah ta'ala where I'm going to end it. And I'm just going to finish it with the following. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Ma asaba min musibatin illa bi Remember, there is no calamity that will ever afflict us except it was by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ Anybody who believes in Allah, Allah will guide his heart to do what? To do the right thing. So if a calamity comes your way right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the ability to cope with that calamity in the best way possible. Why? Because you have iman in your heart. If you don't have iman in your heart, you'll panic. You'll panic and you'll go, you'll be all, in all, over, you'll be all over the place. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'inu bis-sabri was salah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this ayah Allah has said, you need to seek help from two things, patience and salah. Patience and salah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا حَزَبَهُ شَيْءٍ What did he used to say? Salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if anything bothered him, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if something bothered him and was, was, was difficult for him, or he was stressed, what would he do? The first thing he would do is like, he's not going to make a... You know, if anything happens to us right now, what we think about is who shall I call right now? That's always, okay. You would think about who, who's the person, the best person that can help me with this issue. Who Shall I call a lawyer? Am I going to call my mom? Am I going to call my father? Am I going to call my best friend? Because I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble right now. We forget someone important that we, that we need to call. The Prophet ﷺ, whenever he went through difficulties, his, he used to pick up his mobile phone. Where, where did he, who, what was the number that he used to call? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Direct line. The Prophet ﷺ, if he go, if he has any issue right now, the first thing he does is not, he, he doesn't think about, oh, let me pick up my phone and who shall I call? Let us contact, by contact list. Um, sheikh, lawyer, mashallah, manager, mashallah, the rich guy there. Okay, who's going to help me the best? No, no, we forget Allah. Who are these people? They are people. Human beings just like you, they're very weak. They can't do anything for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the, the Prophet ﷺ, if he got into trouble, if, or anything was bothering him, directly salah. He would go salah. Allahu Akbar. Because when you start praying your salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will calm you down. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you, will help you think properly. Because before that, you lost it. Because now, uh, somebody called you and told you really a sad news. Okay, you got into an altercation with somebody. You, you are going through some difficulties. You are panicking. You don't know what to do. Okay, you're saying, who am I going to consult? I need consultation. I need consultation. I need consultation. You forgot the most important person that you need to consult. And that's Allah. How do you consult Allah? You don't have to pay him any fees. You know, sometimes if you need consultation, you have to pay fees. If you want to go to a lawyer, he'll say to you, no problem, I'll give you one hour tomorrow. Okay, you have to pay me. Okay, mashallah. The barcode is just there, so just do it like that. Now, nowadays, it's like, subhanAllah, how to take money is a lot easier than it was before. Just like, you just scan it, scan the barcode, and that's it. The payment has gone in, khalas. How can I help you? Sit down. So now he's going to talk to you. Before that, he's not going to talk. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to charge us any money. Okay, and... The lawyer, if you call him, if you call him, for example, he will say to you, these are out of hours, office, you know, I can't call, I can't really talk, I've got family time right now, I can't talk, so call me tomorrow. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never going to say to you, call me tomorrow. Allah, his line is always open. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if my slaves ask you about me, tell them I'm very near. The line, the direct, the line is always open. 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. Every minute, every second. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there waiting for you. He's waiting for your call. And when you call him, he becomes happy. You know, if you call somebody right now, even if they love you sometimes, they will feel very irritated when you call them. Oh, it's him again. I don't want to answer that call right now. Okay, or he will make an excuse. He'll say, say busy right now. Call me another time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to do that. He's, he's always looking forward to your call. When you call him, he feels even happier that you called him. 
just say, wow, my slave is in touch with me right now. He wants my help. I'm here to help him. Allahu Akbar. That's how we deal with our calamities. Okay, go back to Allah. وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I know everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's expert in everything. Okay? But the lawyer, he's only expert in law. For example, the accountant, he's only expert in accounting. Okay? The doctor is only expert in his field. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's expert in everything. وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ He knows everything, inside out. He even knows those people who were harming you, why they're harming you. He knows like what plans they have. Maybe they're planning a bigger plan. Maybe they're plotting against you even more. But now you came to him, he's going to stop that. He's going to say, ah, I know that stuff. Those guys, I'll deal with them. Don't worry. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? Ittaqi da'wat al Always be worried about the dua of the person who has been oppressed. Because that's a direct line. It goes straight to Allah. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with you if you oppress people. Subhanallah. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to I'm going to take care of these people who are bothering you right now. Okay? So that's the beauty, mashallah. So you have to believe this in your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. So jazakumullah khairan. Brothers, I hope you're going to forgive me. I have to leave very immediately. So I've got other things, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh Abu Salman. Mashallah, our Imam, our Sheikh, Zahullah Khair, Mashallah, it's, it's good to see this wonderful community. And Alhamdulillah, I said, as I said, Inshallah Ta'ala at the beginning, this is, this is going to be my first uh, visit, Inshallah, will not be the, the last uh, one. Uh, so Inshallah Ta'ala, okay, very good, excellent. There's some very good, good questions. But each question needs a lecture. You know, this first question that I was just asked, it requires another lecture. <laughs> but it's a good question. How do we know if a calamity is a blessing or a punishment? Very deep question. It requires a lot of time. It requires a lot of, mashallah, unpacking. Okay. Uh, okay. How to protect from the calamity of our deen? Okay. How to protect from the calamity of our deen and why, subhanAllah. That's another lecture. So you need to get these titles. These questions are titles. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll deal with them. <laughs> okay. Any du'as to be recited during calamities? Yes, mashallah. Yes, one important one is the very famous one. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. What did Allah say? Alladheena idha asabatum musibah qalu inna lillahi wa inna so we always say this inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We always say it when somebody passes away, if somebody dies. But we forget we should say this at all times. For example, if your car breaks down, that's a calamity, some sort of calamity. You should say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. For example, if for example, if you lose money. That's also some sort of calamity. You say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Okay? Also, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma khlufni khair. Umm Salama, radiallahu anha, her husband Abu Salama, when he was about to die, he was very unwell for a while. And uh, he said to his wife, I want to teach you something. And before he taught her anything, he said to her, if I die, if I die, imagine Umm Salama and Abu Salama, they have been together like before Islam probably, during Islam. Both of them, they did hijrah. They went to Abyssinia, came back. And uh, they went through so much together. They loved each other so much. They were from the same family as well. And Abu Salam, when he was about to die, he said to his wife, if I die, I want you to get married. I want you what? To get married. And she said to him, there is no way I'm going to get married after you die. I don't think I will ever find someone like you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to marry somebody else. So said to her, let me teach you a dua. And then he taught her a dua. Okay? And the dua he taught her was like what? This dua. Where he said, I've heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, if a calamity happens to someone, if something, for example, a problem, anything comes up, 
Okay? What are you going to say? The famous dua, who's going to remind us? Allahumma. Allahumma. What are you going to say? You know it. Say it, Sheikh. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati. MashaAllah. Oh Allah, give me ajr for the musibah that you have inflicted me with right now. Afflicted me with. Wahlufli khayram minha. And compensate me with something better. And Umm Salam was like saying, What is better than you? The flag. But once he died, she made this dua. And then guess what? Umar came and proposed to her. She rejected him. Abu Bakr came and proposed to her. She rejected him. And guess who the next proposer is? The Prophet himself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he proposed to her. She mentioned three reasons why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should not marry her. She said, Ya Rasulullah, you are someone that cannot turn down like an offer from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But let me tell you, I have three issues. She said to him, one issue is, I'm a woman and I, my husband has passed away, I have got kids. So if you marry me right now, it's gonna be a problem, you know? I'm a woman, a widow who has kids. This is an issue. And the Prophet said to her, that's not an issue, your kids are my kids. Allahu Akbar. I'm going to treat your kids the way I treat my own kids. So I said, no, that's not a problem. She said to me, Ya Rasulullah, another issue I have is, I am get, I'm, I'm kind of like an old woman right now. Okay? So there's no point of you getting married to me. And the Prophet ﷺ said to her, if you are aging, I am also aging and I'm older than you. It's not a problem. I can deal with that. The age is not an issue. And then she said, Ya Rasulullah, another issue I have is, I am a woman who's jealous. And you're already married to other wives. And if I become a new wife to you right now, I will have jealousy towards them. The Prophet said, that's not an issue. I'll make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he removes the jealousy from you. <coughs> After that, what happened? The rest is history. Mashallah. So the dua that you should read, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, for example, whenever you are for example, afflicted with a, with a calamity, Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufli khayran minha, this dua is also, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you for this, for this particular calamity, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to compensate you with something better. MashaAllah. Sometimes Allah takes something, that will take something away from you, and then he will replace it with something better. But you think when that thing is taken away from you, you think this is the end of the world. It's not. You might be fired from your job tomorrow, and you might think, oh, this was the best job ever. But the next day you'll find out you'll get another one which is even better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a better plan for you. Sakhmullah khairan. That's where we're going to stop, inshallah ta'ala.